I was exceptionally young when I first owned a ZX Spectrum, with my parents purchasing a ZX Spectrum Plus 2 while I was around 4 or 5 years old. Now my long term memory is pretty damn good, but it's only good at picking out random details that are absolutely useless for doing any research. For ages, I've had a game in my mind that I could only recollect as the following. It had a frog in it, and that frog was part of a board game, but on each of the squares you get to shoot stuff. And also I think it might have had a weird tie-in with Captain Bucky O'Hare. If an item does not appear in our records, it does not exist. I've posited this random description on Twitter and other places a couple of times in the past, and everyone has rightfully accused me of having a mental breakdown, but I was convinced, absolutely convinced, that this thing in my head was definitely a game. And it was. So up yours, everyone on the internet. My memory is a temple. Worship at its ability to slightly remember things. Cosmic War Toad, in fact, has absolutely nothing to do with Captain Bucky O'Hare, and that's probably the one thing that was confusing people more than anything else. But you'll forgive me for misremembering that, because I didn't get around to playing it until roughly 1992, delivered to me in a hand-me-down box from a very kind neighbour. In 1992, hot off the heels of a thousand and one other anthropomorphic kids' cash-ins such as biker mice from Mars, street sharks, samurai pizza cats, and everything else that tried to gain the same success that Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles had gained. Bucky O'Hare appeared. For those not in the know, the main antagonists in Bucky O'Hare were toads, and without any frame of reference, my mind simply attached this image with this image, and it stuck like that for 30 years. Why didn't I just look at the manual to realise that it wasn't linked to Bucky O'Hare? Well, here's the thing. When the game was handed down to me, it wasn't handed down to me as the fully boxed game, it was provided to me as part of a Crash magazine tape. There was no manual. And this probably goes further to explain why I had literally no idea what was happening on screen. It didn't matter though. It left an impression, and that impression is fully understood now I've had a chance to go back and play it. Cosmic War Toad is unlike anything else I've played on the ZX Spectrum. It's ambitious without actually reaching its full potential. It's confusing while also being exceptionally simple, and it's absolutely worth talking about today. It's also, I may add, a relief to finally understand just what the hell is going on, because one other very strong memory I had of this game was... What? The problem with getting the game on a hand-me-down crash cassette is that I didn't have the magazine that came along with it, and I presume the magazine would have told me what on earth was actually happening on screen, because out of context, just look at this. Now look at this. How about this? Cosmic Warto doesn't just come with instructions, it comes with an absolutely baffling amount of words that seem to string sentences together that are supposed to form instructions, but it's like trying to read a book about how to drive a car without ever even knowing cars exist. There's very little context here unless you read the instructions alongside playing the game itself, because it's full of sentences like In the Rigelian Void, time and space do not operate, and traversing must be achieved by moving between time nodes, and this contradiction is demonstrated on screen by the use of time windows superimposed upon your real when and where. What we're talking about is licking toads to get high. It is genuinely the most baffling instruction manual to read out of context that I've ever come across, but thankfully, after 28 hours of rereading the instructions, I half understood what it's getting at. This is the main game grid. You are represented by this lovely froggy icon here, and your goal is, ultimately, to reach the bottom left of the grid. To do that, you use your tadpole flavoured mouse pointer to choose the direction you want to go in, and then press fire. But top tip, do not choose space as your fire button, because that is also the pause button. This makes doing anything impossible, so I'd suggest you steer clear of that, unlike me. Each of these nodes on the main map represents something different. The green square is where you currently reside, the purple square is for charging your weapon back up, which gradually depletes during the many, many action sequences. Red squares are locked time tunnels, white squares are unlocked time tunnels, and everything else is just a normal, everyday, run-of-the-mill square. The type of square you'd maybe see on a shelf in Ikea, but with monsters in it. It's a monster! And that's the meat of this game, really. Monsters, and the dealing with... of... them they're in. Whatever, sentences are difficult. Each time you enter one of these squares, you're taken into an action section, wherein you have to fight off whatever monstrosities the game has decided to throw at you. There are three different types here, and in typical Cosmic War Toad style, everything about them is a mixture of very simple and bizarrely complicated. 
Straight from the manual here, there are three types of enemy which are color coded for their grade of nastiness. Four categories, white, yellow, magenta, and finally the most nasty, red. The higher the grade, the more difficult to beat, since you must reduce its power grade by grade until all nastiness is gone. However, their task in defeating you is much easier. They merely have to level up their nastiness to the one above. The philosophy of survival in the time vacuums is therefore quite simple. If it moves, shoot it. If it doesn't move, shoot it anyway. Above all, avoid contact with the nasties or anything they may send at you, for it's through these collisions that they will defeat you. Relatively simple so far, but we haven't even started talking about the actual enemies themselves yet. Once again, straight from the manual. Slime Master. Small but deadly. A single contact may be enough to bring you down. They are escorted by their fawning cohorts, slime pawns, who both protect their master and attack. These pawns will be reproduced should you dispose of them and vary in number depending on the nastiness of their master. The status of the master is monitored on screen by a bar chart to the left of the time window. Okay, so, got it. Kill these slimes, aim for the big one where possible, and get this status bar down to nout. Got it. Cool. Easy peasy. Next enemy type. Wait, what? why does this one not have a status bar? What's going on? Sludge Slug. They always occur in regimented ranks and will throw sludge as well as hurling themselves at you. In their time windows, you can only move left and right, so you must wait until they attack and then respond instantly, shooting their sludge and then the slugs themselves. The progress of battle is monitored by a large status slug below the time window. To the far right, you have won. To the left, ignominious defeat. Right, okay, so... This one, yeah, okay, right, I kill them, and this time the status window is here, and these move, and if I get hit, it goes that way, if I kill them, it goes the other way, got it, okay, right, Whoa. what the hell is happening on this one then? Frenzied Fly, the buzzing pests attack in swarms and have the same suicidal tendencies as the slime pawns, but with more vigor, making them very difficult adversaries. However, sometimes they swarm together, seemingly uninterested in your presence. Then is the time to move in and annihilate them en masse. Status is monitored by a fly in the tube to the right of the time window. Stop moving the status bar! You can see why all of this absolutely baffled my nine-year-old smooth brain, right? I'm nearly 40 and I still feel like I've just gained 12 wrinkles. We haven't even got onto discussing timed ultrasonic robotic defenders and the road to nowhere and somewhere. Those are actual titles of sections in the instructions. This is a ZX Spectrum game about a toad with a laser gun. So look. I'm not going to get into all of that because we'll be here all day. The basic gist is this. You've got one hour and 30 minutes of real time to get your toad from A to B, collecting various pieces of equipment along the way. It's not quite as exciting sounding when I say it, but I'll just keep it at that for now. There are two distinct areas to the game, that being the map screen, where you choose the direction to head in, and the battle segments. The map screen is, by and large, simple enough to navigate. It's the battles where the real meat of this whole thing reside. You move around, you shoot stuff, you win or lose. Once again, I'm boiling down a huge swathe of text from the instructions in order to give you the basic highlight, but that's the key here. You shuffle around, you shoot stuff, and you try not to get hit, which is easier said than done because Mr. Wartoad himself is a pretty beefy boy. The Slime Master and the Frenzied Fly segments are both relatively simple in that you're freeform running and gunning around a static screen, whereas the Sludge Slug section, my particular favourite, requires you to have the reflexes of a cat in order to run in, dodge stuff, spin around, shoot the thing you want, dodge again. It feels like you're constantly on the edge of your seat from the start to the end of these sections, and I really enjoy them. But. But. Three sections. Three sections of varying difficulties. Three sections of varying difficulties that you'll be playing over and over and over again until you either die or reach the end. And that's the biggest flaw I can levy at this game. It just repeats itself too quickly, and I highly suspect that's simply down to memory limitations, because there's absolutely nothing in this game that you could call lazy. It is, in all honesty, not just an astounding achievement, it's incredibly inventive alongside it. This was, from what I can see in the blurb, an original idea from Simon Butler, and it's 100% clear that he had a vision. From the manual with its insane levels of detail, to the big bold graphics which litter the screen, to this complicated long game of moving your way through this board game-like grid, nothing about Cosmic Wartoad's ambition is lost in what it's lacking. The biggest issue with Cosmic Wartoad is that there simply isn't enough of it. At least, certainly not now. But bear in mind that this game walked onto shop shelves in 1986 and crammed itself into 48k. You can likely understand why I'm just so fascinated by it. 
Reviews from magazines at the time, however, while mostly on the positive side, could likely be described as a little mixed. Ultimately, although the game is extremely well presented and documented, it gets repetitive and boring. Some nice ideas, well executed, but let down because there's not much of a game in evidence. CMVG there, and it's difficult to argue with the conclusion. It's just a shame that there's no points given for sheer batshittery. Anyway, next up. There's an awful lot of instructions to this game, and the scenario is well complicated. It took me a while to read and digest the inlay, and I still had to play for about half an hour before I fully understood what was going on. Maybe I'm a bit dim. Once you get to grips with this game, however, it's really neat and frustrating. I can see it's going to be a while before I crack the problem and rescue the Queen. Essentially, there are three arcade sequences, each of which is a compelling game in its own right, and there's an overall strategic element to the game. The graphics are good, especially the animation of the cosmic war toad himself. If you don't move, it just sits there and blinks at you. Lots of nice touches add up to a compelling game. Crash Magazine there, glad to see I'm not the only middle-aged man who struggled to understand what the hell was going on. Hugely more positive, however, and note just how many details the reviewer is trying to cram into one paragraph at the end. I support that enthusiasm. I don't support this weird quote, though. A fun game, which will probably be remembered for its name, rather than the game itself. Computer Gamer Magazine, you have absolutely proven yourself wrong with me. The only thing I could remember after 30 years was the bloody game. I couldn't remember the name to save myself, so take that, whoever wrote that particular article. You're wrong. To sum all of this up into a nice basket of tadpoles then, is Cosmic War Toad worth playing today? Uh, not really. It, it's too repetitive a game to really get a grand amount of enjoyment out of it, but that's not really why I want to talk about it. It's simply the ambition of it all. Cosmic War Toad, much like the children's cartoon I originally confused it with, bounces off every single wall in the room. I mean, look, here's Wikipedia's description of the main characters in Bucky O'Hare. Bucky O'Hare, a green hare, captain of a SPACE frigate named the Righteous Indignation. Jenny, first mate and pilot, a female cat from the planet Aldebaran, with mysterious magical and psionic powers common to the females of her species. They include telepathy, astral projection, energy blasts and healing. She shows overt romantic affections for Willie DeWitt, as if she had a crush on him. Willie DeWitt, engineer, a preteen human genius from San Francisco who enters the parallel universe via a portal between the ship's photon accelerator and his own accelerator. Oh, look, there's also a fucking duck with four arms who shoots everything, but you get my point. There's a reason I was attracted to Captain Bucky O'Hare, and it's exactly the same reason that I was attracted to Cosmic War Toad. I didn't quite understand what on earth any of it was all about, but I did enjoy seeing someone go creative, go absolutely bananas with whatever canvas they had in front of them. This game is like nothing I've ever come across, and while it's no longer got the energy to keep me engaged, I still respect the fact that it's an absolute masterpiece of consistent, otherworldly vision. Do I want an updated Cosmic War Toad with more levels and variety? Yes, absolutely. Do I want a new series of Captain Bucky O'Hare? Do I bollocks? Bucky! Captain Bucky O'Hare! Mutants and aliens and toads beware! You're looking for adventure with the system! Jenny, dead eye, Blinky, and Willie, to win, I said, Bucky, Captain Bucky, your head.